Hello everyone. You have certainly already had fun with this little strip of paper called a Moebius strip. It is a simple strip of paper that is twisted half a turn on itself and then the ends are adhered together. What is enjoyable is attempting to divide it in half. And when it is divided lengthwise, we do not obtain two ribbons but rather one. Let's analyze this fascinating mathematical phenomenon. Let's start with a horizontal strip of paper. First, we turn around halfway lengthwise. Next, fold the strip onto itself and utilize glue to join the two ends together. This is the creation of our Moebius strip. Let's compare this geometric surface with a classic untwisted ring. A classic ribbon has two sides. We can assign a distinct color to every face. We can discuss the inner side as well as the outer side of the object. Two places not identical. The Moebius strip, on the other hand, has only one side. The U-turn on the ribbon means that the light blue side now touches the dark blue side. The border between the two is clearly visible. This border is a result of how we constructed the ribbon. Let's make it vanish by extending the color from above as much as possible. The two borders have vanished and the Moebius strip has only one color. There is just a single face. An alternative method to demonstrate that there is only one side is to pass through it. Let's place an observer on a classic ribbon and ask him to follow the ribbon. He will make a complete tour and return to his starting point. Clearly it will remain on the outer side without ever moving towards the inner side. Let's repeat the experiment using a Mubus ribbon. With just one side, our small man needs to travel a path that is twice as long. At one point, he goes under the starting point. If the ribbon wasn't twisted, he would have finished his journey. But because of the twist, he is only halfway there. He must continue to find himself back at the starting point. We can enjoy ourselves making two observers depart from the same spot, each on a side opposite to the position of the other. On a classic ribbon, everyone stays on their side. Halfway, they are in the same place, but still each on their own side. When they finish their little tour, they never crossed paths. Let's move on to the Mebus ribbon. There is now only one face, and since they are going in opposite directions, they will inevitably cross paths. The initial crossing occurs at half the ribbon's length. The subsequent crossing finds them on opposite sides of the surface. They are halfway through their journey as we know. This is the exact opposite situation from the starting point. The one who was on top is now at the bottom, and vice versa. Additionally, the one at the top shifts left, while the one at the bottom shifts right. They continue and cross paths again half a length of ribbon further. And unsurprisingly, when they finish their journey, they find themselves in the same configuration as at the start. Note that if there is only one face, there is also only one edge. If we start from a point on the edge of the ribbon, we return to the starting point by traversing both sides of the ribbon. One face with one edge. What will happen if we attempt to cut this ribbon lengthwise, dividing it into two equal halves? Let's study and find out. Instead of receiving two ribbons, we receive only one, which is twice as long. What happens if we decide to cut this ribbon in half along its length? A small cut and we achieve this incredible outcome. One ribbon, twice the length of the original one. We have seen that twisting a half turn has the effect of reversing the top and bottom of the strip. By sticking the two ends together, the top side communicates with the bottom side, which creates the uniqueness of the Moebius surface. Let's start the operation by pre-cutting the ribbon before sticking the two ends together. We now have two ribbons, one blue and one pink, to better visualize what is happening. Twisting operation reverses top and bottom of each ribbon as expected. But we also realize that this twist has another effect. She reverses the position of each half of the ribbon. The blue side is found on the pink side and vice versa. By attaching the ribbon, we adhere each colored end with the end of the other color. Separate the two strips one after the other. Let's initiate with the blue one. We bend it and position its end on the starting point of the pink band. 
Before doing the same thing with the pink ribbon, let's unfold this intermediate result. We see that we have a larger ribbon, blue and pink. The sticking of the blue half with the pink half actually consists of putting the two halves of ribbon end to end. We can move on to the second gluing from this situation, which provides a perfect explanation for why we end up with only one ribbon when we cut a Moebius ribbon. The twist of a half turn of a Moebius strip has two effects. The first is to reverse the two sides, which results in obtaining a ribbon with only one side. The twist reverses the right side and the left side, so by cutting the ribbon in half, we obtain a ribbon twice as long instead of two ribbons. And what occurs if we attempt to cut our Moebius strip in half once more? Prior to giving it a try, I highly suggest that you make an informed guess regarding the expected outcome. Let's start with a flat ribbon. We saw that by making a U-turn, we reverse the top and bottom as well as the left and right. And in case we make an extra U-turn, two U-turns make up a complete turn in total. With the second half turn, faces and sides return to initial position. By sticking two ends together, top side communicates with top side and bottom with bottom. The right side is glued with the right and the left with the left. There are two sides. You can color the ribbon with two colors that do not touch each other. A normal ribbon, you know. Not quite, because there is this twist of a full turn, and this twist will have an effect on the cut. The right side of the ribbon being stuck to itself, cutting the ribbon will indeed give two smaller distinct ribbons. But the twist causes the two ribbons obtained to be intertwined. Again, we can see how this nesting occurs by starting from the two halves of the horizontal ribbons. The twist of a full turn puts each half ribbon back on its side, but by making each one pass over the other. Let's fold a half ribbon onto itself. We can clearly see that, due to the twist, the other half ribbon passes inside. By closing it, we have two ribbons, each twisted once and intertwined with each other. Let's return to our Moebius strip cut in half. We know that we get this result by starting with two half ribbons turned half a turn and glued together at the end. The ribbon obtained consists of two half ribbons, each with a half turn twist. The total twist of the ribbon is one complete turn. And we know what we get by cutting along a ribbon with a twist of one full turn. Two twisted ribbons of one turn nested inside each other. Once you've done that, let's proceed to verify and see if your guess was accurate or not. Here is our Moebius strip cut twice in two, and we have two separate ribbons intertwined with each other. Each ribbon is independent of the other. Each ribbon is twisted one turn. So, if you have wondered what you get by dividing each ribbon in half again, do you get, for instance, a single ribbon that is twice as long again? You have the answer by considering the number of half turns that the twist includes. Each nested ribbon has one twist. By having it, I get two twisted ribbons of one turn intertwined with each other and with the first one. If we start from a twisted strip of paper with three half turns, 1.5 turns. If we start from a twisted ribbon of three half turns, 1.5 turns. If there's an odd number of half turns, we get a Mobius strip. One face, one color, one edge. Both sides are reversed, and by cutting it in half, we obtain a single ribbon. The ribbon twist is twice the initial twist. Thus, she completes three full turns. It's no longer a Moebius strip. By cutting it in half, we obtain two thinner ribbons with the same three full twists. Two ribbons intertwined as many times as there are two turns with three interlacing. If you take a strip of paper and twist it before sticking the ends together, if the number of half turns is even, or if the number of turns is an integer, you get an orientable surface. Two faces to color with two colors, two edges. Cutting it in half yields two ribbons with the same twist, intertwined as many times as there are turns. If the number of half turns is odd, you get a Mobius strip, one face, one color, one edge. By cutting it in half, you obtain a distinctive ribbon with a dual twist of the original twist. You then receive a ribbon of the previous type, 
with two colorable faces having different colors. It may seem strange to be able to create an orientable surface with an external face and an internal face from a non-orientable surface with a single face. How can these two sides appear? We can understand the answer by looking at the boundary. The Moebius strip has only one edge. When I cut the ribbon along the center line, I create a second edge that never meets the existing one. This new edge from scissor cutting communicates with itself. In the result, I have two edges. The initial edge is from the scissor cut. Both sides appear on each side of the cut. They're located between the two edges. We have previously talked about the technique of twisting the ribbon lengthwise and bending it to close the ribbon on itself. Do these two rotations have any relation or connection to each other? When you fold a strip of paper onto itself, there is no twisting or turning involved. But by rotating the top of the ribbon by half a turn, two twists become visible on each side. These are two half-turn twists, each in the opposite direction of the other half-turn twist. Let's now try to unfold the paper loop by slightly releasing the end on the side and then pulling it horizontally to try to put it back in its original position. The loop decreases when the end is pulled. At some point, we are stuck. To continue without tearing the paper, rotate the top of the loop. By performing this rotation, a twist appears in the length of the paper. And thanks to this operation, we can now continue to pull the end to eventually find the elongated shape of the paper strip. A twist has appeared. It's a twist of a full turn. The meaning of this twist depends on the side chosen to slide the end. By passing through the other side, the twist obtained upon arrival is in the opposite direction. On a simple loop, this outcome may not seem interesting. But let's take a double loop without torsion. Expanding a loop decreases the size of the other. To make it disappear completely, you need to turn its top exactly as we just did. We then notice that one of the loops has been converted into a twist of one revolution. A loop is equal to a twist of one full revolution. The converse is true. We can return to a double loop without torsion. A twist is the same as a loop. We can examine a cut Moebius strip to understand this concept. We observe that this ribbon is the sum of two half ribbons placed end to end. Each ribbon has a half turn twist and a loop. The total number of loops in the sequence is two, along with a single full twist. So, by twisting it in a specific manner, we should be capable of creating three loops that are not twisted. I invite you to participate in this small exercise with a cut Moebius strip. Immediately after the cut, there are two loops and a twist in the strip. I have the ability to unfold it, and when I unfold it, I am left with only one loop and two twists. The initial twist is one of the two loops transformed into a twist. Therefore, what I am capable of doing is eliminating the two twists and recreating three loops without any twists present in them. It is not easy. You must not make a mistake. It takes a little time, but we get there. There you go. I am uncertain whether it shows well on camera, but the cut Mobius strip no longer has any twists only three loops remaining in its structure. And this brings us to a new way of making a Mobius strip. We can start with a slightly long ribbon. I glued two lengths together and then twisted it on itself to form three loops. I do not have any twist and I simply have three loops. Therefore, this ribbon is equivalent to a cut Moebius ribbon in terms of its properties. By removing a loop, I create a twist and I should be able to reconstruct my Moebius strip. Sticking the edges together is a bit complex. There is an alternative method to accomplish it. It's a little long, you have to take your time. We need to form one loop and two twists. With a little patience, we can do it. I rebuilt this Mobius strip by gluing the faces together. I left behind three loops and stumbled upon a double Moebius ribbon during my expedition. And what does this new version of the ribbon teach us? Well, one can also cut a Moebius strip through the edge. 
If we could split a ribbon at the edge, we'd obtain this identical result using the classic cutting technique. To trim ribbon from edge, it must have certain thickness. Finally, we realized starting slice was just face with no width. If we give a thickness to the slice, nothing prevents us from giving it the same size as the face. We then have a square slice that gives the initial ribbon a twisted shape. The obtained shape can be rounded and then we have a torus, which is the geometric shape of a tire. By adding thickness to the Morbius strip, a new dimension is created, giving rise to new questions. I suggest studying them in a new video, which will give us the opportunity to return to the fourth dimension. I hope I didn't make your head spin too much with all these twists and turns, and I'll see you soon.